Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today we're going to continue working on the ability system. I'm going to do a brief overview of what we worked on last time, and then we'll just jump right into coding the uh, ranged ability behavior where we left off last time. So, uh, the, first thing, <clears throat> the first thing we did last time was work on the basic object information class. We decided that uh, each, you know, these, these three things, a name, a description, and an icon, were three things that almost every object in our game is going to have. So, uh, having said that, we created three constructors for that to get that information, and we created a couple gets to access that information. The next thing that we worked on was this range ability behavior. It's our first ability behavior. Uh, if you remember, we're creating a fireball ability, so uh, we know that's a ranged ability. So we wanted to add that behavior uh, to our list of ability behaviors uh, so we decided that's the first one that we're gonna work on and this is where we left off there's not much to it we created a really basic constructor here a couple gets and then uh, some private variables and we're gonna go ahead and, and get into that more in depth in just a moment but first I wanna add a few things to our ability class uh, so in our ability class here this is where we left off uh, with that I wanna add a few private variables uh, with some more information and if you guys have more information please don't hesitate leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys wanna add to the ability class as well because we can add as much as we need uh, as we go but first let's the I wanna add well actually first let's talk about I changed our cooldown to a float instead of an integer and uh, I just changed it up there and then I changed it in our constructor down here and I also changed it in uh, the get the, the method for our get, uh, I changed it to a float from an int. Um, and now we're going to add a couple other floats. So we're going to add a first float, it's going to be a cast time, like that. Our cast time is also going to be in seconds, so let's make a comment here for that. Um, basically, an ability has some sort of cast time, usually, like one and a half seconds to create a spell, a half a second, it, maybe it's instant, maybe it has a cast time of zero. Uh, but most abilities have some sort of cast time, so we definitely want to include that. The next thing we have here is a private float. Uh, this is going to be cost. Most abilities in RPGs have some sort of a cost associated with it. A lot of magic abilities have like a mana cost. Uh, a lot of strength abilities require some type of endurance or rage. Um, and so I want to have that variable included. Uh, it's generic. It's just cost because we don't, you know, I don't know what your project is. Maybe your project takes away experience points every time you use an ability. Maybe it takes away currency. Maybe you have a cards. Maybe you have mana. Maybe you have energy. I, I don't know. But we just have a cost variable that uh, is associated with whatever you call your unit of of energy or cost or whatever. But we have cost. Uh, you subtract that away from that that number. Uh, the next thing I want to add is ability type. So what, the way we're going to do that is create a public enum, and it's going to be called ability type, like that. And the only two that we have now is spell and melee attack. Uh, we might put buff and debuff down later, uh, but we can use this later on to sort and to just sort, th just get a list of things that are spells and whatnot, and organize. Maybe we have a spell journal or ability journal that only shows spells, melee attacks. You know, we can sort it that way. But now that we've done that, we need to add a private variable to access that. Just cache it, I mean. Uh, so we'll have ability type, and then we'll just call it type. Pretty simple. Uh, we're not going to worry about adding these to the uh, constructors down below or setting a get for them, but we'll do that later. I just wanted to add these now uh, while I was thinking about it. Uh, but let's go ahead and start working on our ranged ability behavior some more today. So right here we have, uh, I'm going to keep this. I added this because we're going to... I want to create a random distance, but before I get more into this, let's go into Unity and I'll talk about what I'm, what, what I'm getting at. So here I have a basic cube. Uh, it's a 3D cube. I wanted to create and made a 3D object, uh, and I just renamed it to Projectile, and I also added a rigid body to it. And we're not going to be messing around with the rigid body today, but eventually we will be because I want my spells, my projectiles at least, to be. Uh, physics based. I want them to, I want physics in the game world, whatever your physics are, to affect my game objects. So that was the general idea. And now that they, now that I know that they're going to be physical game objects, I know that they're going to have a position, right? They're going to have a position uh, in world space based on this transform. And so having said that, I've decided that what ranged means is 
the distance, the max distance, the life distance that this object will travel before it either disappears, gets turned off, gets destroyed, whatever. Uh, if we have infinite amount of space, this object will travel this uh, this amount of distance. And then I also wanted to add some randomness to it. And that's what we're going to work on adding today. So let's go into Visual Studio and let's start working on some of that basic stuff. So we know that we need a bool for it to check is random, right? So if random is true, then we want to create a random distance between our min and max. That's the first thing I would like to do. So let's create a private variable here and it's gonna be bool. It's gonna be is random on, right? And the reason why we're caching it is because maybe in game you want the player to choose random distance. Uh, maybe there's some sort of buff that triggers is random distance on. Uh, so that's why we're gonna have that on there. And then we're gonna create up another private float. Uh, this float is gonna be life. We're gonna call it life distance. And this is the dis this is the maximum amount of distance before the object gets destroyed. So now that let's set up our constructor now that we have a few of these things. We know our min distance is gonna be equal to our min dist, which is what we pass in, right? Our maximum distance is going to be equal to our max dist which is the value we pass in and then our is random on is going to be equal to is random now there's a couple things here you can think about um, if you don't want to if you want to permanently set the life distance you can do it in the constructor so that you, you don't ever change it uh, you can set it initially once so it has the same randomness every single the same random life distance every time or we can do it every time we perform the ability or the the ability which is the way I want to do it so we're gonna code it so that every time this ability is used this ability behavior is used we have a random range that this item will go um, so having said that uh, the way we're gonna be doing that is using a coroutine and in order to use a coroutine we need to use mono behavior uh, to start the coroutine um, so the quick way we're gonna add that functionality is by going into our ability behaviors class and we're gonna have ability behaviors class inherit mono behavior again and when that when that happens ranged is also going to inherit it because range inherits ability behavior which therefore inherits mono behavior another reason why I wanted to add mono behavior and we might again we might change this later on, but I want to attach ability behaviors to a game object. And in order for it to be attached to a game object, it needs to have a mono behavior. Now we're not actually attaching the ranged. Uh, we're just going to be passing a data. So again, we'll probably be changing that later. Uh, but for now, we're going to have ability behaviors inherit from mono behavior so we can use start coroutine. Uh, but let's go back into ability behaviors and let's look at this public virtual void you see I've added this debug.log warning statement and all this is gonna do is tell me or remind us that if we create an ability behavior and we forget to uh, forget to create a perform behavior method for it uh, it's gonna throw this warning and say hey you need to add some sort of behavior to this ability that's all that is uh, so I'm gonna copy that and we're going to paste it in our ranged attack, our ranged ability behavior, excuse me. So here we have the ranged ability behavior. We have our perform behavior method, and it's set right now to virtual. We want to set it as override. And what override means, or what it does, is that it's going to override its uh, base class method of the same name, of the same type, right? So in our base class, we have this perform behavior method. It's virtual, meaning that we can override it using the override keyword we can override it and say hey every time perform behavior is called in this for this range behavior it's gonna perform whatever is in this line of this block of code and not whatever is in this block of code pretty simple so let's go ahead and control s that and talk about our coroutine uh, so we're gonna create a super simple coroutine for now and we'll add on to it more but it's gonna be private its return time is gonna be IE numerator and I did a video on coroutines a little while back, so go ahead and check that out if you're confused. Uh, but we'll do a private IE numerator, and we're going to call it check distance. And <clears throat> we're going to yield return null. 
Okay, so right now this coroutine is going to do absolutely nothing except return null. Uh, but we need it so we can call start coroutine and start testing. So here we have it. I'm going to copy check distance like that and paste it in there. So we're going to be, as soon as we call perform behavior, we're going to start our coroutine. Now our coroutine does nothing, right? But we need it to be checking the player's position, uh, our starting position versus the object's position. And in order to do that, we need to calculate what our life distance is. So we're going to create an if statement up top. And the life distance is going to be equal to a condition that we're going to check. And that condition is, is random on. So if is random on is true, then we're going to run the first condition, which that means we're going to do random range uh, min distance max distance. And I'll type all this out and then I'll explain it. And then we do a colon for the second expression. So if is random is false, it will run the second expression which means life distance is going to be equal to max distance. Okay, so all this line of code does is it creates an if statement in one line of code. We're saying, hey, life distance is going to be equal to either random range or our max distance, depending on if random is random on is true or false. So if is random on is true, then random range, it's going to get us a random range between our min and max distance and set it equal to life distance. If is random on is false, then it's just going to set life distance equal to max distance. So now that we have the distance that we want to travel, or the farthest this distance is going to travel, we need to continually check to see if we've reached that point. And the way we're going to do that initially is we're just going to say, hey, if this dot transform uh, dot position and actually let me go back let's go back a few steps we need to actually gather the player's position so when we call perform behavior we need to pass in the players the start position so we'll say uh, which will be a vector 3 so we're gonna pass in a vector 3 and it's gonna be start position like that uh, and we're gonna also need that in our coroutine so we'll pass it into our coroutine as well so when we call our coroutine, we're going to pass in its start position, and we need to calculate the distance between the vector start position, the vector three start position, and our current vector position. And the way we do that is by using a variable or, or a method called distance dot distance. So uh, we're going to run an if statement, and we're going to say if life distance, and you know what, we'll do a little bit. We'll say if life distance. Uh, Let's calculate the, the distance between. So we'll say uh, float temp distance is equal to, um, we'll say <clears throat> vector 3 dot distance. Uh, and this takes a vector a and, a and b, and it's the first position. So we'll say our start position, and then our position, which will be this dot transform dot position. And this is going to return a float. And then we'll check to see if this distance is greater than our life distance. So if temp distance is greater than, or we'll say equal to, our life distance, then what do we want to do? Well, if this is true, that means we've passed our, our maximum distance. We want it to, right now, we're just going to say this dot game object dot set active to false the reason why we're not destroying it and we can with just d destroy this d dot game object uh, we want to set active to false because we'll probably end up creating a, a object pool so right now we just want to go ahead and just turn it off so we're just turning the game object off uh, for now and that's basically it so now we, we have set up a coroutine where we, we calculate our life distance first we start the coroutine as our perform behavior and then we start this IE new, this coroutine here where we're just looping back. Uh, now there is one issue, right? And the issue is it's just going to do this once and then it's going to stop because we're yield returning null. Uh, so we need to put it in a while loop. So we can say while, um, let's say while one, which again, you got to be real careful with inf uh, infinite loops in Unity. They, if you, Unity hates infinite loops for the most part. Uh, we'll say while true. 
we're going to yield we're gonna cut that out we're gonna paste that in here um, so as soon as we're gonna yield and actually we're gonna get rid of the so we'll do this get rid of this if statement we're gonna say while temp distance while temp distance is less than or equal to life distance we're going to continue to calculate it right and why we and then once we once this is true so the, so it's going to continue to do this while it while uh, it's false and as soon as it's true it's going to exit out of this while loop and what we want to do is then call this dot uh, game object dot set active is equal to false. So we're going to turn off the game object and then we're going to do yield return null. All right. <clears throat> so I'll do a brief explanation of how this works, uh, and then we'll end the video there. So the first thing we do is we calculate our distance, the distance between our start position and our player's position. Once we do that, we're going to enter this while loop, and as long as temp distance is less than or equal to, oh, well, actually we'll say less than our life distance then we're going to continue this while loop it's going to continue calculating and as soon as temp distance is greater than life distance it's going to exit the while loop it's going to turn off our game object and here we can run the object pooling code if we want uh... we'll say object pooling code if you want or destroy it's really up to you and we'll discuss it later as soon as we do that, then we're going to yield return null, and this behavior is done. We don't need to worry about it anymore. Uh, so this is how range is going to work, and we'll go ahead and continue talking about more of the next abilities in the next video. Uh, please like, subscribe, and comment. If you got oh, we got an issue. Let's let's work that out. Uh, oh, okay. So the. Um, so the error here, it's saying no suitable uh, method to override. It has to override the same method, and since perform behavior here is taking a vector three star position, it also needs to take it in ability behavior. So that error should go away. Yep. So basically, this, the method that you override needs to be the same exact method uh, as the virtual method. So pretty simple. Uh, real fi we got that fix done. I don't want to leave you guys with too many errors, which we, it looks like we don't have any more. Um, but anyways, uh, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, if you got any suggestions, any more, any comments that you want to add, please write down in the comments below. Uh, otherwise, I'll talk to you guys next time.